morning, everyone. My name is Alex Alberts, and I'm here with Ali Machinchi. And today, we're going to talk about a very exciting product that we have from Hangar 9. This is the new Cup Crafters S-Cup 60cc. Right, Ali? Correct. Uh, yeah. It's the first one that we've ever done, any brand from Horizon. Uh, this is the most modern cup up to date. And today, I'm going to have Ali just talk through us most of the details of this exciting airplane that we have here. So, Ali, can you tell us some of the details that we have? I can tell you a lot of the details. We're going to be here a while. There you go. It's quite a complicated airplane. <laughs> we have time. Good. As Alex said, this is the uh, Cup Crafters, a model of the Cup Crafters uh, X Cup. Um, it's a roughly between a third and quarter scale, so one 3.6 to be exact. Um, we worked very closely with Cub Crafters. We were super lucky. They were on board from the get-go. We, we made a 15cc carbon cup a few years ago. That was actually my first project when I came to uh, work at Horizon and be a Hangar 9 developer. From that, um, li literally, the, probably a few weeks after that started selling in earnest, um, Cub Crafters announced this, the x Cup. I believe it was at Oshkosh, certainly at Oshkosh, right. where I first saw the marketing right. um, bump from the full scale. So I approached them and said, look, would you guys be okay, you know, really tentative, and would you be okay if we made a model of it? They couldn't do enough, you know. They supplied us with factory awesome. drawings, yep. any technical questions we had, um, which helped a lot in the development. Right. So, yeah, we got going. We're officially licensed. It's the first model of the X-Cub. And for those that don't know, the X-Cub is the pinnacle of... Piper Cub development. It's uh, built by a company called Cub Crafters, most famous for their carbon cub. Uh, it's the highest performance, highest flying, longest range, fastest cub ever been made. Awesome. Um, if you look at some of the stats on it, it's you think they've made a typo. You know, a cub shouldn't fly that fast, shouldn't right. fly that far, but it does. Awesome. And to do that on the full scale, they've literally started at the spinner and worked all the way back with it. Whilst it looks like a cub at a distance, when you come up close, you see it's completely redesigned. And that's something that we did with the model. I did with the model working with our factory. Is we started the spinner and went all the way back, started awesome. afresh. Awesome. So let's start from kind of the cowl area. Mm -hmm. uh, I see a big white spinner, a big cowl. What do we have there? Yeah, we'll go through some of the feature sets and some of the cool options with the airplane or some of the things that come with it. Spinner. It's a four inch aluminium back plated spinner, mm -hmm. color coded to match the cowling. Comes with it in the kit. It's so that's about a $50 value? Yeah, say. something yeah. like that, depending yeah. where you're buying it from. But the fact is, we put it in there so you don't have to go hunting for the right shape right. spinner or the right size spinner or the right color match spinner. It's in there. Awesome. The cowling works really hard with our factory to make the cowling um, the appropriate shape. One to look like the full scale because it's very, very different to a traditional Piper Cub cowling. Right. And more importantly to me was making it so we could fit a model engine inside. Obviously the full size is a four cylinder flat four um, configuration. Right. A lot of our customers are going to use a single cylinder, which right. sometimes means you've got to cut an you know, unsightly yeah. hole in the cowling mm -hmm. for cooling fins or mufflers. Right. No need with this. This, ca awesome. this cowling will slide right over the front of the Evo 62. Evolution 62cc cool. with the um, Evolution muffler. Awesome. The only thing you need to cut out is for the uh, exits for the uh, muffler tubes. And we're even working with the factory right now to try and make a specific muffler for this aeroplane okay. that will exit out the bottom. Awesome. And that's a thing. That's another thing about this aeroplane. We've worked with a whole bunch of partner companies um, to offer specific, tailor-made, optional parts that you can buy to improve the look, improve mm -hmm. the functionality, improve just the general details of this aeroplane. And awesome. we'll get to those later on. So one of the questions that came up yesterday was a twin, fitting a twin, yeah. especially the DA70 or DLD, maybe 61. Yep. Are those, can those fit inside the cow? I'm about 10 feet away from right. here right now working on the DLE 60 twin okay. installation which is uh, a pretty standard configured engine so shouldn't be a problem to fit something like a DA70 um, plenty of cowling space for mufflers twins you know, we can't mention twins without talking of the Sato's Sato 61 four yeah. strokes can fit straight in here looks beautiful it's gonna sound amazing, amazing. Yeah. yeah so that's the next one on my list after the uh, DLE 60 twin I'll be putting a Sato in one for those guys the electric guys yeah can you retrofit like a Power 360? It's or? not even retrofit. It's it's fit from standard. Okay. You know, 
one of my uh, mantras, ethos is with uh, Hangar 9 planes that I develop is that I don't want to pigeonhole them into one type of power plant. Right. So I try and make them where possible that they have multi-power plants. Okay. So out of the box, the aeroplane is set up for either gas or electric. Okay. The electric setup, as you can see, is what I've got in this one, which is probably my most flown sample, is the E-Flight Power 360 running on, I use 12S 7000, so two 7000 milliamp packs, um, just to get the punch and power for duration. But, and I know we're going to get people asking, can you use this, can you use that? Right. On the very first flight of this aeroplane, um, a little bit of uh, error by me, I configured the batteries the wrong way around, so it was only 6S. Wow, this aeroplane flew. Took off. It wasn't. <laughs> it was a few hairy moments initially, right, right, but right. I did three laps. Going, I wonder what's wrong. Why has this thing got not so much power? Right, gotcha. Bought wow. it in, checked my wiring, and sure enough, I'd wired it instead of Correct. series of power. Yeah. But yeah, anything from, let's say, eight to twelve s. Eight to twelve s. And in milliamps, just five thousand to seven thousand. It needs the weight to balance. Being a okay. cub, long tail, short nose, there's bigger that you can get the better. I mean, if you want to put weight in it, it will carry the weight and use 5,000s, no problem at all. But I use the 7,000 milliamps. We have some 7,000 milliamps packs coming from Horizon very soon right, that right. are incredible. Can't say more here. But yeah, they're going to be a straight drop fit, incredible performance. We're talking 3D performance. I can prop hang, talk roll, climb vertically unlimited with that. Okay, so I think we kind of have the cowl area already uh, talked about here. Yep. So let's move to the uh, kind of the uh, cockpit, fuselage, what do we yeah, have? Yeah, it's going to be difficult showing you on camera, unfortunately, but we go to the cockpit. So prominent feature of the, uh, the any of the Piper Cubs is the side opening doors. You can't really make a Cub without doing side right. opening doors. One of the, the challenging things with the side opening doors is how to retain them, how to open them. Okay. You know, you can put screws, you can put latches. It works. I mean, it's functional. It's right. great. The problem is it's not very beautiful and it's not very uh, user-friendly to be undoing screws mm -hmm. each time. So um, knowing that I wanted to make it electric, knowing that people were going to want to get in and out of the cockpit, um, I worked with the factory and made a system that is very similar to the full size. It's a twist, a rotating lock system. So it has a central handle, very much like the full scale, in the full scale position, that you twist and it fires two pins, front and rear, like backwards and forwards to unlock okay. and then forwards and backwards to lock. Okay. So what you have basically is a single-handed, almost instant locking system. Awesome. So yeah, you can get in and out of that cockpit super quick. That's pretty cool. Top door is hinged as per the full scale. Okay. I've put a bolt and a blind nut in the wing. Um, so if you want to hold this door open whilst you're working in there, that's great. There are people who are going to want to fly with it open as well. So right. that. So I think the, uh, the on the 15cc is just magnetic. There's a magnet on the side of the wing to hold the door. No, up. no, we didn't make. I learned that's a lesson I learned from the 15cc. Right. People so I think said, this one's very different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We listen to feedback. You know, it's right. it's. I'm out in the field and people say, oh, I wish this thing held open. And I remember somebody said because right, right. I saw them struggling and sort of right. logged it and approached the factory and they were super helpful. Awesome. So inside the cockpit, I see instrument panel. Seats. Comes with a decal, yeah. Um, okay. uh, instrument panel per the full size. Um, seats, two removable seats. Out comes okay. this guy. So lots of area there. The seats literally just slide forwards and backwards if you want to take them out. So oh, cool. like that and that, and they come out if you want to. Again, aids uh, installation of batteries. I mean, I do all of the battery installation on this one with the seats in place. I just take out the pilot. The pilot. So. Okay. Awesome. Um, Hatch. There is, of course, you can put the batteries if you're powering um, electric from the doors. Mm -hmm. But also, there is a top hatch as well. Yeah, magnetic top hatch. Um, not only for the battery installation, for the wing um, retention system. Okay. Again, another sort of mantra ethos with uh, my Hangar 9 planes is as toolless as possible. Right. Don't like going to the field where you need special tools. Right. So yeah. we use toolless um, wing bolts, and those can be accessed from the uh, top hatch, ah, which is awesome. magnetic. Four magnets. Um, so it's really, really secure. The production kits will actually come with a bolt and a blind nut as well for those people who just want belt and braces, don't want to have any chance of this right, hatch right. coming okay. off. Cool. I've done all of the test flying without the bolt and I've yet to have a hatch come off. So yeah, it worked out so. well. It's got a wedge shape system here that means that it locks in place. And boom. Okay, so let's move up to the, uh, I guess the wing now. So yeah. it's a two-piece wing? 
Two-piece wing, yeah, nice and easy. Fold away struts, uh, two pins on the struts, two bolts at the bottom. That's the wing off, and you can fold the struts away so you don't have this super cumbersome wing. And this is a, I think you mentioned already, it's a 116, 116 inch wing. Just under right? 10 feet, yeah, 9.6 feet, 116 inches. Okay, uh, the size of the surfaces, I've noticed on the video you were, you know, hovering and doing aerobatics. Are there scale, you would call them scale, just a little bit bigger than scale? I've or? cheated, I took some liberties there. Um, obviously, okay. because the full scale is a non aerobatic type airplane. Right. Um, on this one, I've increased the, both the flap and aileron about 15% okay. on each one. Um, increases the effectiveness, effectively, <laughs> of the um, flaps and ailerons. The flaps are hinged in a scale-type manner, so they don't go up. They're just usually used as flaps. As flaps okay. So with that in mind, I knew that I wanted to have as much aileron control as possible. So cheated the cord of the aileron. That gives me a, a cub that is fully aerobatic. I right. mean, you can probably see in our amazing product video, yeah. um, the X-Cub doing some non-cub non aerobatics. Yeah. Torque rolls, prop hang, snap rolls, pretty aggressive spins, multi-point rolls, all that sort of stuff. Awesome. I wanted an airplane cool. that you didn't just have to fly like a cub. You can take it off and put around, just around yeah. or go and that's fly. That's the way I will fly. But exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm more the other way. I'm more the hooligan. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So um, what about the hinges? Does pre-hinge? How does it come out of the box? The wing is all pre-hinged with a scale knuckle type hinge. Okay. Um, again, being as big as it is and as scale as it is, I didn't want to use uh, a, a visual hinge, hinge, if you like. So okay. it's fiberglass hinges on ailerons and flaps with a pin that drives through. So you can actually remove the surface if you really wanted to. Awesome. Um, but it gives that look, a really clean look of a full scale airplane. Okay, so on the, um, on the little carbon cut, we have lights. Yes. Do we have lights on this one as well? I we do. On, so. Yeah, yeah, we have the lights are on. Um, three lights, two landing okay. lights and a tail on the the back. light on the, on the rudder. Uh, again, a lesson learned from the Carbon Cub. Right. Um, Carbon Cub used a very low voltage LED system which was okay. great because it would last forever and people could put pretty much any battery they wanted to, like a single Duracell, um, an AA cell. Um, but we got a lot of feedback for people who want to use two um, cell LiPos or even three cell LiPos, and that's what we have here. These are 3S compatible wow. LEDs. I mean, they'll operate quite happily on 2S, LiFi, NIM, whatever you've got, but they will happily work at 3S. 3S. And all the wiring is already done for you, so there's Lights are installed, wires are really routed. Um, you have to push the one in the, f the rudder, but that's already got a mount and a hole in there. But yeah, literally setting up the lights takes 20 minutes and whichever way you want. I mean, I, I'm a simpleton when it comes to stuff like that, so I just have the lights on permanently, but I know some people will want to run it through a, like a speed control le electronic switch, and there are even some people that want to make them blink, you know, flash, so, and you can do that. Okay. Awesome. So let's move back to the uh, kind of the center section here in the fuselage. I see this is a tow release. Yes. Awesome. So again, I wanted to increase the feature set of this airplane, the playability, as it were. Right. So aerotow. Um, so area that a lot of people want to try, and maybe they're put off by the fact they have to modify the airframe right, or right. find the aerotow release system or craft an aerotow release system. I wanted to get rid of all of that. I wanted to include it in the box from the get go. So I worked with the factory, made this beautiful all-aluminium um, Aerotow, super heavy-duty Aerotow system um, that comes ready to fit. Not fitted, so those that don't want to Aerotow, you know what? So it's not installed like you see no. here. It's it takes in the box. 30 seconds to screw right. it in um, for those that want to install it. I think it looks cool. I'd, I'd, I'd put it here, even though it wasn't right, 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 right. And more importantly... Doesn't Even the mounts inside the fuselage are done. So there's no guesswork. No, I have to put another former right. in, and is this going to be strong enough? Right. We've towed a 40%, so nearly half-scale glider with this airplane. Awesome. You know, we regularly tow a one-third scale, um, all-composite, high-performance glider with this airplane. So, yeah, it's perfect. Awesome. All the servo mounts in there, push rods in there, you're, you're good to go on Aerotow. Awesome. I see um, antenna. Is that removable too? Yes, uh, again, wanted to try and improve lesson learned. We, we've done some antennas in the past which have been uh, screw on, and people say, oh, it's a bit of a chore taking it on and off. Right. So, worked with the factory to have a little way. <laughs> there goes the antenna. There it goes. It's so easily removable. We'll put that down there for now. But yeah, it's a uh, quick release, quick to drop uh, antenna system. <laughs> That's great. All right, so let's move now to the back of the airplane if you want to just walk around here. Yeah, I can do So, we have um, flying wires, and I see a big, big. Um, tundra 
um, wheel over there. Yes. So flying wires are standard. The full scale has them. They're fully functional. Okay. Uh, they really increase the rigidity of the back end of the airplane. Um, you could probably fly without them, but I really wouldn't recommend it. It's a big tail plane, flat section, again, as per full scale. Okay. The full scale doesn't have an aerofoiled uh, stab. It's uh, flat. Uh, same with the rudder. Um, these use conventional hinges, like heavy-duty pin hinges. Uh, so, yeah, they're, they're really built for stout heavy okay. work. And on the subject of stout, the tail wheel, um, one of about 15 features that I'm really, really proud of on this airplane. Um, we worked with the factory. Again, I, feedback I get from people is, oh, you know, the, the, t the tail wheel or the hardware doesn't match or it doesn't last. Okay. We worked and we paid for the tooling and the machining of an all um, wow. machined aluminium heavy duty tail wheel. This thing is, you know, I'm not going to say unbreakable because I'm sure somebody <laughs> will prove me wrong, but it's the most stout tail wheel that Very I've ever right. seen on an ARTF awesome. aircraft. That's and that good. comes as standard. You know, this is an item that if you were to buy it separately, you're talking. I don't know, between 70 to 100 bucks for that unit. I've seen people pay even more. Right. Um, that comes in the Including. box. Yeah. Where'd you go? Awesome. That's pretty cool. Tail light, um, as we, we touched on. Painted control horns. They're all painted to match um, silver. Uh, so they're just, they're fiberglass as well. So they're glued into no obtrusive okay. um, mounts that come through. Trying to keep that scale look as close as possible. Awesome. So now I'm going to move into the uh, landing gear. Yes. Because there's a lot of questions, a lot of options there for the guys out there. So. Um, you guys want to talk about um, what's included and what's not included? Sure, yeah, it's a little bit complicated um, uh, as far as the way you can go with the undercarriage. Okay. So the full-scale X-Cub, I mean, I don't know how to word this. The full-scale X-Cub is offered with a rigid style aerodynamic streamlined undercarriage. It's one of the things that makes the X-Cub what it is. It's the fact that they got rid of the drag of the um, traditional sprung undercarriage and used the... Um, more conventional type, like you'd see on a sport model, model yeah, right. rigid undercarriage. Right. Now, we worked with X-Cup, as I said, from the get-go, and one of the things I saw in the very first drawing they sent me was this little box in the uh, line drawings which showed okay. an option that you could specify if you were $300,000 to spend and uh, wanted an, uh, an X-Cub with the undercarriage, you could tick that box and have this undercarriage. That's awesome. So I worked with the factory from the get-go and said, look, wouldn't it be cool if we offered that as well for customers? Because I know some people are going to want the modern with the traditional look. Right, right. And that's what you can do with this plane. So from the get-go, it will be offered with the scale, rigid type undercarriage. Okay. Um, the wheels. Um, a bit like the tail wheel, we got a lot of feedback as far as durability, size and quality. We wanted to make the big 7 inch oversized wheels that the real X-Cub has. And um, we tried with a couple of vendors overseas, mixed results, you know, we'd okay. get a light wheel and it wouldn't quite handle the side loads or they'd make it stronger and it'd be too rigid. We got super lucky in that we managed to partner up with Sullivan Products. Right household name in the RC industry, right. been around for decades and decades, make quality stuff. They actually make a seven inch aluminium rubber wheel with an aluminium hub okay. with a Teflon bush. We somehow, I don't know how we managed to do it, um, <laughs> managed to work it that we include in every x Cup a pair of those wheels. Awesome. Pretty cool. So that's Pretty what's cool. going to come as standard. Rigid right. undercarriage with Sullivan wheels. That okay. matches every x Cup in the world, full scale. Because believe it or not, cup crafters have never sold a full scale X Cub with, with, the optional, with the bungee. Yeah. Never wow. done. Wow. Everyone specified it with the rigid undercarriage. And the last time I spoke to them, they were well north of uh, on the way to 100 X Cub sales in real life. And all those wow. people have said we either have it on floats or we have it with the rigid. Yeah. But we have the optional undercarriage, which is a, a tick part. No modification required. All the mounts are in there already if you want to put the bungee undercarriage on it and away you go. That's just the undercarriage. That will work with the Sullivan wheels that are supplied with the kit. Right. Or if you want to go into the whole myriad of um, optional parts, you've got a company called PR Bush Wheels. As I okay. said at the beginning, we've partnered up with a whole bunch of people on this project. Sullivan being one, PR Bush being another, Warbird Pilots being another, Tailored Pilots in the UK, iFly Tailies for the, the uh, dashboard, dashboard we'll get to yeah. later. Yeah. But one of the, the key partners has been PR. Small company up in Alaska, right. they specialize in just making 
bush style undercarriages, wheels, tailwheel assemblies. They've got a cult following, and rightly so. They right. make some They're amazing. super amazing, funky yeah. stuff. Yeah. And what we have here is the PR option, basically. Okay. This is, believe it or not, the small option, small wheel. I saw one of the ones you brought to the <laughs> office again. They were quite yeah, big. This is the 8.5, I think, or 8.75. 8 so okay. nearly 9 inch um, airfield tires from PR Bush. They also make a 11.6 inch. Wow. I should have bought one in. I, I kicked myself, but um, I'm busy putting them on an airplane right now. So that's for the real extreme wow. Tundra style. Can't wait to see it. Yeah. They've made those specifically for this airplane. So the axles slide onto our optional undercarriage. Um, okay. They're talking about making it so they'll slide onto our rigid undercarriage as well. Um, so, yeah, if you really want to <laughs> so zoop up your X Cub. That's one of the options. That's awesome. The struts, that's a PR option as well. They okay. do a proper dampened uh, strut. Our undercarriage is standard is sprung. It's bungee sprung, like mm -hmm. the full scale. Right. Um, but PR do these really, really cool, heavy duty, stainless steel, almost bulletproof sort of um, struts, which if you have a look, gives the undercarriage loads wow. of movement. Amazing. So the video shows it taxiing on some pretty rough terrain and you see the undercarriage working. That's awesome. Yeah, that's the undercarriage that's option. Cool. It's going to take a while for people to get their heads around it because right, there's right, so right. many choices. There's so many choices. Yeah, but, but yeah. That's, that's what people want, right? They want options. So That was the goal, yeah. was to supply an airplane that people could go and do what they wanted to. I mean, pilots. You know, it's a silly thing, but it completes a model to me. You know, something like this without somebody in the cockpit is like, ah, it's something missing. Right. So we worked with Adam at Warbird Pilots, right. an American company. We worked with Wilson over at Ta Tailored Pilots in the UK. They both offer custom pilots for this aeroplane. Awesome. So you can have one, you can have two. I wouldn't say you can have three, but <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> you've got family. choices. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and whilst we're in the cockpit, um, we mentioned earlier that it comes with a... Uh, vinyl dash like a sticker right, for the right. dashboard m represents the modern x cub with the glass screen just this morning i got the very first sample from iFly Tailies of a fully printed 3d raised panel that wow. looks almost indistinguishable from the full scale i literally just put some contact cement on dropped it in bang yeah, awesome. you know hopefully we'll have some pictures of that up <laughs> online soon that's another one of the options that is available even prop i forgot we're working with a company in brazil um, called JC Super Props. They're making a scale uh, uh, Hartzell, Herzl, I don't know how to pronounce it, scale prop, which is very okay. distinctive. It's painted, it's, a ver it's a, almost a scimitar shape uh, propeller um, on the modern Cubs. They're going to offer that as an option as well. So. Okay, so is that prop, um, can you use that same prop on an electric and a gas, or is it more for a gas? You can. Um, it's better to have a different pitch. The electric right. motor is so powerful, right, right. so much torque, that it can swing more pitch. Okay. Um, give you an idea, the gas prop that I'm using on the Evo 62 is about 2210. Okay. The electric prop, I've gone up to 2412 and 2414. Right. Ampage goes up a little bit, but the power's like crazy. Okay, awesome. So we haven't mentioned the price at all. Um, so the I price feel like we should. Right? Right, right, yeah. After all these details <laughs> and comprehensive look. Uh, so the price on this will be eight ninety nine ninety nine. That's going to be the street price. And it comes, like Ali says, just typical ARF. So no servos, no receivers, no, no modern or nothing like that. So what, what quick question, what are the servos you're you using on this one? It's a standard size servo. So it really boils down to how you want to fly it. You know, if you just want to putt around like a cub, and take it easy and have a Sunday flyer for touch and goes, you could get away with almost bog standard. Something like a 6110 would do it. Right. Um, but being bigger control surfaces, being a bigger airplane and um, uh, higher flight loads potentially, we'd recommend something like a Metal Gear, Metal Gear okay. you know, a mid-level <laughs> server. Nothing special. You don't have to go and buy $125 okay. a piece servos. Awesome. So servos in the price range of about 40 to 50 bucks, no problem. And receiver, I mean, there's wide options for receiver, right? You I set it up. I mean, again, if you're handy with Y leads, the a flaps are set up so you can Y lead those. Ailerons you can Y lead. You could fly this if you really wanted to on something like six channels. Six channels, yeah. Yeah, I'd recommend more. Um, my receiver of choice right. is something like the AR9350, um, or better still, the PowerSafe receivers that we offer because they have the redundancy of um, dual batteries. Right. You need the weight in the nose. You may as well have it as useful weight. Put two batteries in there. Keep it safer. Keep you know right. peace of mind. 
Awesome. And 9350, you can have the AS3X. So yes. To, so yeah, yeah and the PowerSafe. PowerSafe right. now with the uh, AS3000 just released. Right. Yeah, right. you can have Jara awesome. systems. So. Awesome. So, um, Carl, do we have any questions on YouTube? YouTube is good. Okay. Uh, okay. When can people actually see this shipping? So actually, this is the question was when is actually going to be start shipping? Uh, we have the date now for August, so that's the day we're gonna. Um, so just a couple of months out. So Late summer. They're in production now, um, working with the factory to start getting orders on the water as soon as possible. Okay. So um, next week for the guys that are gonna go join all. Yep. Miss you and I are gonna be there. We're gonna have a couple of these out. Flying in the uh, main, main two flight minimum, line. maybe three. Yeah. Maybe three. So if you guys are in the area and you guys go into the show, just make sure to stop by our booth, and we're gonna have Ali there. He can show it to you. Um, maybe give you a little try it. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why not? It's sure. uh, such a simple airplane to fly. It's yeah. not a problem. Sure. Awesome. So any other details? Anything that we miss on the airplane? Or it's a tough one because I'm so attached <laughs> to the project and it's. So many features, well, I feel like yeah. I could talk for hours, and right. sorry for talking Yeah, so we're very excited about this product coming yeah, out this are. summer, and uh, I think it's going to be well, and you know, make, put your pre-orders in, and hopefully you get it in a couple months. So. Some guys are wondering, how is this the largest one we've ever made? Ah, good it question. Is. It is good the question. largest cub we've ever made, and it has the largest right. wheels of any airplane that we've ever sold. So right. it maybe is the, that yeah. is the largest announcement that Hangar 9 has made, but maybe, maybe not. not. We've been teasing on Facebook, so uh, keep watching the page, and if you're in journal again, make sure to stop by, and you might see something new, maybe even bigger. So. And it may even be appropriate to this airplane. There you have it. So thanks for watching, guys, and thanks, Ali, for stopping by. Always a pleasure. Awesome. So thank you. Happy landings.